first time chat on some um, twitch it's yaman hey chicho i recently came across your channel and loving your work i'm 24 from canada no degree no specialized skill and was on the red rat wheel for the past few years now i'm unemployed and living with family again i'm job searching and hoping to work on a side business um, providing simple property uh, property services I've also considered going to school. I want to be able to provide financially for myself and future family. What advice would you give to someone like me? Uh, first advice, um, it's Yaman. And welcome to our live stream, by the way. First advice, don't get into debt, right? Don't get into debt. I don't, I don't even care if it's like not any debt that you cannot, uh, not just service, but pay down. Right. So servicing debt to a certain degree says, let's say, you know, you borrow ten thousand dollars. Right. And you're paying, let's say, 10 percent interest, whatever. Right. Ten percent. Right. That's a thousand dollars a year. Right. Uh, if you're servicing that debt, you pay interest on it. Let's say you can pay a thousand dollars a year. Right. Then you're not knocking anything off the principal. Right. And that's problematic. That means at the end of that year, you still owe ten thousand dollars. Do not get into any type of debt like that at all, right? Even for a business, right? If you're going to get into any type of debt like that, make sure you're taking off the principal and make sure you're doing it for a good reason because interest rates, in my opinion, are not going to go down anytime soon. Not the way people want. People right now are paying like 9%, 10% of their mortgage, 9% of their mortgage, which is insane, right? Now, I might go higher. Now, you can generate a certain amount of income okay from doing many 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 different things right if you're not 100 percent sure on what you really want to put all your eggs in right and i don't recommend putting all your eggs in one basket make sure you're going in heavy into something that is not dependent on licensing from the government because they may change their mind for example in bc they just took away property rights people had made these plans saying oh we're gonna buy a house and it's gonna have a suite and then we're gonna rent that out to uh, short-term renters be airbnb or whatever it was and then that's gonna help pay the mortgage so we can afford this house bc government just changed that law last year so all those people that went into debt to buy this house to buy this property assuming that they could rent it out for short-term and medium-term base uh, basis or now have to look at their spreadsheet and go oh that income's not coming in not only that interest rates went up taxes went up and government more government regulation came in so they went heavy and in nbc in, in canada you buy a house you're going heavy right because you really can't go any other way other than going every house right it's a bubble remember you're buying into a bubble people bought into a bubble so that was their business model they just got screwed man they got they got annihilated right there were people that borrowed money to open up a retail outlet maybe restaurant maybe services maybe whatever and they got screwed how did they get screwed they got screwed on multiple fronts one of them was government said shut down your business Another one was their taxes going through the roof. Another one was their energy bills going through the roof. Another one was they needed to hire people and they can't find anyone to hire at a reasonable rate, right? So do you know where I'm, do you, do you see where I'm going with this, right? So going all in in one thing is very dangerous. My recommendation is if you're, especially if you're starting out decentralized, make sure you have two or three different revenue streams coming in. Right. They don't have to be a lot on themselves and make sure at least one of them is your own personal thing. That's not linked up with any corporation. So don't work three jobs for three different corporations and hope that, you know, one of them is going to get you up the ladder or through the door or whatever you want. Right. Try to get one of them to be your own business, because in Canada, the tax system, the way it's set up in Canada is that everyone in Canada should have their own business sole proprietorship preferably if they're starting out because what that does is if you're generating money here working for a corporation bringing getting a paycheck right every two weeks you get a paycheck 
right? Then you're in a certain tax bracket, right? But if you open up a sole proprietorship, you don't even have to do anything. You can just register a name or not even register a name for initially. I forget the rules and regulations right now, right? But look into it, right? You don't need to incorporate. It costs you like 60 bucks to do a name search and 60 bucks to register the thing. What you can do, and make sure it's something you want to be in, right? Or something that you can, you're okay with spending a little bit of money on to be able to generate a little bit of revenue. Because what you can do is take the money that you made from wherever you're working and take some of that and put it into your own business where you can write off some of your salary towards investing in your own business. And hopefully you're building capital in that business. You don't have to show profit, but you can reinvest if you're making money, if you're making money, right? And what that does from the salary that you're making, that reduces your your tax bracket, right? So all of a sudden, if you're making $50,000 a year, if you can put $15,000 into your own private business a year, whatever that might be, I don't know what it might be, right? Maybe it's a, it's a food critic, you open up your own website, you make videos, and you write off, you go out to eat on restaurants, you write off, I don't know if this is, this is not tax advice, I don't know if you can write off the whole thing, I don't know if this is legit, talk to an accountant, talk to someone professional, this is just an example. Maybe you can write off your meals, right? That feeds you, right? It's expensive, but feeds you, right? You can write reviews online, make videos of reviews, right? So you got revenue stream coming that way, right? You're reducing your expenses, uh, your tax bracket from the money you're making in, and you're building a company, hopefully it'll go somewhere, so all of a sudden, if you're, let's say, in a $50,000 tax bracket and you're paying 20% tax in a $50,000 tax bracket, that means $10,000 of your salary goes towards um, taxes, right? So really, you're only bringing back $40,000 a year if you're lucky in Canada. The tax bracket in Canada is a lot higher than 20%, I think, for $50,000, right? But if you're able to spend, let's say, $15,000 of not spend but take fifteen thousand dollars of your income that's after taxes fifteen thousand dollars of your income well it's actually before taxes if you do your own taxes fifteen thousand dollars of your income put it into your business whatever it might be all of a sudden you've gone from a fifty thousand dollar tax bracket down to a thirty five thousand dollar tax bracket and the thirty five thousand dollar tax bracket may not be twenty percent maybe it's fifteen percent it's a lot higher than Maybe it's 15%. That means you only have to pay 15% tax on the money you're making, right? So not only do you get back, you get back the taxes you paid on that $15,000 that you just invested in this company. So you get straight up $15,000 back in those taxes on the rest of the $35,000, you get another 5% back because you overpaid because you're in a $50,000. Now, this is all I'm going by memory. I'm not doing any numbers. I'm not looking anything up. This is just I'm giving you a gist of it. An accountant may say Chicho's talking out of his ass. He doesn't know what he's talking about, right? He doesn't know what he's talking about. And maybe I don't, right? But Canada is set up for you to, if you're working salary, to write off a little bit of your salary on some kind of business so you can be in a lower tax bracket because that's the only way you'll be able to survive in Canada, right? In Canada. Maybe if you're working for a company, right, and they love you, what you can do is cut a deal with them and say, hey, listen, take me on as part-time and the other half of it i'll still work for you guys but i'm forming my own company consulting company and pay my consulting company a company that you might be working for full time might actually like that deal because if you're only working part-time they won't have to give you benefits so it's less expense for them right as long as you're healthy, if you need the dentals, you need the medical, you need the massage, you need the uh, uh, physiotherapy, you need all that stuff, then may, yeah, you, it's the ball and chain, right? 
But if they agree with that, then you're making part time and your consulting company would be billing them, get money from the consulting company. You, this company starts making money. And now this company incorporated, maybe that most likely would have to be incorporated, right? Then this company is, is its own entity and the money in that entity, if it's you're splitting up, let's say you're making $50,000. If you're splitting that up between two different entities, this you is only making $25,000. This company is only making $25,000. All of a sudden you're in a way lower tax bracket, right? You're not in the $50,000 tax bracket, you're in a $25,000 tax bracket, and you can still do funny little things over here and over here, right? So what you need to do in Canada, really, what you need to do in Canada, it's not as important as what type of piece of paper you have, is if you know what type of system you're functioning under, right? That's the most important thing. And that goes true for every other place in the Western world, really. But in Canada, I'm speaking in Canada because I live in Canada, right? So that's really the game at play if you want to have financial independence in Canada. Understand the system that's in play right now make sure you take advantage of all the options legal that the government has provided you for example in canada they have something called the tfsa tax-free savings account where every year every canadian and it's cumulative right every canadian can take five thousand dollars of their income they used to be they, it, it was five thousand then kicked up to ten thousand i'm not 100 sure what it is right now right you can take let's say five thousand dollars of your income and put it into this TFSA account, and that's a tax-free savings account. So any money you make in that account, may it be trading, may it be GICs, may it be whatever, is tax-free, right? So for example, let's say you in your tax-free savings account, you went ahead six months ago, bought Rumble stock, which was trading at $3.50, right? You put $5,000 in there, and Rumble stock went up to eight something, but let's say you sold it at seven, which is sitting around right now. So you made 100% profit on your Rumble stock. Woohoo, rock and roll, right? Now your $5,000 in that tax-free savings account now just became $10,000, right? Woohoo, rock and roll. If you sell that Rumble stock, now you have $10,000 in that Rumble stock, but that's tax-free $5,000 you made, right? If you did that in a regular trading stock, the government will come along and say that's capital gains from the five thousand dollars profit that you made they'll take two thousand five hundred dollars right so if you did the same thing in a normal trading account that ten thousand dollars the risk that you took right to invest that money now is only seven thousand five hundred but in tax-free savings account it's still ten thousand dollars right these are some of the loopholes the the regulations that centralized power has put into place and every citizen of every country has to look at the system they live under. Ideally, what you want to do is get rid of this fucking governments, right? Downsize them by 95%. So your money is your money. They're not robbing you. There's another word for it, right? Taking your family's, your children's money to go wage war somewhere, right? All these regulations are in place to stop you from being able to conduct business out to be financially independent, right? Because that's just for Joe Blow, me and you. It's not for corporations, mega corporations and stuff. They got army of accountants sitting there going, hey, hey, we found another loophole. Let's go around it. Wee, 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 wee. That's why Amazon didn't pay any taxes for what, 20 years, <laughs> right? Not only that, they got taxes back, right? How, how often do people, Canadians, get taxes back from the government after they've paid you know, 30% of the salary to taxes, right? So people need to, that's one one reason why I said that person that want to take the money, they heard this thing on the radio saying, give us your money, we'll make you more money. He want, this person, she actually wanted to put her money in there. She was too lazy to look into the system available for her to make money, right? That's my advice. It's Yaman. I know it's, it's, a, it's a lot I'm not talking about, you know, what fields you should go on or anything like this because that's irrelevant because I don't know what you like. 
the most important thing you know you need to understand is what type of system are you functioning under in canada you should appreciate that we're in a fascist system right now and it's collapsing uh, behave accordingly right behave accordingly because there are places that there are profits to be made and there's a lot of places that are about to go down the toilet okay i hope that helps um apologies about going off on that um i didn't read the chat uh, uh, okay i'm gonna scroll down all the way to the bottom gang just because i'm gonna see if there's anything directed towards me uh 